So now the rain won't gather in these little pockets. It should just sh shed off, right? And now we got a little bit of an airspace so the sun can heat the soil and then the, the heat escapes from the soil and gets captured here and just creates a little microclimate. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGrinding.com and uh, I just did a video uh, the other day on uh, a way that I, you know, instead of doing transplants indoors, I make a little kind of mini greenhouse and plant in there. And, uh, and then I thought I'd do another video on that same topic because there's always questions. And uh, also people have a tendency to, you know, see one thing you're doing and think that's the only approach. So uh, I thought I'd speak a little, step back a little bit from that concept of making a mini greenhouse and speaking more generally to just creating uh, microclimates using whatever you have kicking around and uh, you know your ingenuity and your creativity and that sort of thing so I, I thought I'd just, so the different examples in my garden right now of, of what I've got going on and I'll probably come up with other things and uh, just to speak to that the, the reason I do this right uh, aside from just not having the room for it in my house and knowing it works here and uh, you know, you may not think it'll work where you are, maybe it won't. I can't really speak to that. Um, but if you're thinking about the temperature and, and people say that I'm in, see that I'm in zone 6A um, and they think, well, you know, I'm in zone five, I can't do it. Um, the fact that I'm in zone 6A uh, does not speak to how quickly spring comes on, how warm April, May, and June are, how sunny April, May, and June are. All the zone speaks to is how cold it can get in the winter. Okay, you have to remember that. That just, all that means is the coldest kind of temperature you can get in the winter. Because it speaks to the survivability of various perennials. It doesn't speak to the length of your growing season. It doesn't speak to the, uh, the amount of heat you get during the growing season. It doesn't speak to the quality of sunlight you get during your growing season, how sunny it is as opposed to being overcast and foggy. In these microclimates I'm creating, they run on sun. To that effect, I mean, so today it was around zero, it was below freezing at night, I know because my goldfish pond has is, is, got a layer of ice on top. And uh, it's around five Celsius right now, it's a bit, bit nippy. And it's probably gonna get up to about eight or nine today, I would guess. Um, now when you're in the sun, it feels a little bit better. Um, but uh, I would take it being two degrees Celsius, that's two degrees above freezing in Celsius for those that use Fahrenheit, and sunny all day to it being 12 degrees Celsius and it being overcast all day because in one of my microclimates, whether it's a dome or a little mini greenhouse or whatever, I'm, you know, I'll show you these examples. Um, if it's two degrees Celsius and sunny, I know it's gonna get warm enough for things to germinate and grow in there. Right? It's, it's about sun. The sun inside that, that environment, the air being captured, and the sun's, sun's rays getting through without the wind blowing away. Even right now, it's, it's fairly windy. It's, it's cold. It's cool right now outside. So anything that isn't enclosed, the ambient air, air is just going to remove whatever heat the sun is creating by shining on the ground or on the soil where your plant is growing. The, all that heat that might be held in the ambient air, right, the air right next to that stuff, um, all that heat is being blown away <laughs> by the wind sort of thing. So it can't heat up and that's why it's cold. But I, if I was a very tiny, if I was this big and I could crawl under the, uh, into one of my hoop houses right now, it would be nice and warm in there, like a greenhouse, right? That's why greenhouses work. And, uh, I get lots of comments from viewers saying, I'm building a greenhouse, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. That's great. Um, but uh, for a fraction of the cost, you can build a mini greenhouse or a hoop house or a row tunnel or something like that. Um, you can put it wherever you want it to be. You can get something growing in the soil it's going to be in. Uh, there's, uh, you know, every year around February, I mull over ideas for building a greenhouse. And then... Uh, you know, the more I, th I think about it for a couple of months every year, and uh, every year I come back to using the system that I have here. I just can't bring myself to lay down the money, to lay down the, the expense, and to devote the space to it. Um, that's me. I mean, do what works for you. Um, 
and uh, you know in terms of growing season I have a short growing season really the frost free time is so at some point in June the risk of frost disappears <laughs> first week second week something like that and the risk of frosts reemerges around the middle of September so it's a fairly short growing season in that sense although we get a reasonably long growing season for things that can handle frost and that's why I'm planting all my coal crops you know the brassicas crucifers you know things like that uh, and lettuce and peas things that can handle frost right there's a lot of greens um, that can, things that are like dandelions and you know all that sort of category of plant that family uh, those things can handle uh, a cold freezing night right there's dead uh, literally uh, I got up at 4 a.m. this morning use bathroom and I looked out the uh, bathroom window and there was a porcupine eating something on my rear lawn you know really a porcupine's an indicator for me that uh, things are starting to grow on my lawn not grass but uh, you know probably dandelion or maybe clover but I would guess something like a maybe uh, oh what's it called uh, um, oh a plantain maybe something like that right and I when I see a porcupine or a rabbit on my my backyard um, they're not eating the grass usually they're eating some weed and, and most likely they're eating the kind of weed I would eat I eat the young dandelions I eat the young um, uh, planting and things like that sometimes right so uh, anyway let me take you around enough of me enough of me talking uh, how about I just take you around the garden and show you these different kind of microclimates that I've created all right so here here is what we might call the the creme de la creme of the microclimate the low tunnel hoop hoop house row house row tunnel there's all these different terms for these I, I call it a hoop house or often I just call it a dome <laughs> you know um, so uh, anyway, this sort of thing I find, you know, in terms of the area it covers, how much it weighs, how much it costs to make one, how many years you get out of it. This plastic holds up for about five years. You can see I've put some uh, tape on it and stuff like that to sort of just uh, keep, you know, manage it because <laughs> it does get a bit damaged. Uh, but, um, you know, this is about the best, but these are a bit large, right? But if you want to plant a whole bed, they work. And I mean, the soil under here is thawed and there's actually... Um, I think lettuce and uh, kale. I can't remember. There's something growing in there. I'd, I'd have to look at my garden plan. Um, so, uh, and as a, someone just commented the other day, you should you should mark the row of everything you plant. And you have a little popsicle stick with the name on it. Uh, when you got a 2,500 square foot garden, you, you don't mess around with stuff like that. Um, I have a garden plan all laid out, and I plant basically what I plan to do on the plan. If I plant something different, I write it down on in the, the, the file I use an Excel file uh, I write it down so I have a record of what I planted but really by the thing by the time that whatever I've planted by the time it's got a couple leaves on it I know what it is anyway right I've been gardening for years I can just tell by looking sometimes I can tell by the first two leaves the, 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 what are they called caudal leaves uh, cotyledons but uh, by the second or third leaves I can, I can just tell what it is so I, that's why I don't need to mark anything um, but the soil here is thawed this soil is yeah, it's, it's fro the top inch of this is, is frozen right now, right? just from last night. This was thawed yesterday afternoon. I was out here in the afternoon. This was thawed. Now it's frozen. It'll thaw it again today, just to give you a sense of how cold it is right now. All right. Over here, I've got just two of these. Uh, basically, I, I, I made a rectangle out of uh, wood, just one by three, and stapled some plastic onto it. And there's a bit of an airspace right now. I jammed a rock down here. It's angled this way because it gets the morning sun better than the afternoon sun. It's only slight angle anyway. But anyway, it's, uh, it's propped up so that it's, it's about four inches off the ground. So there's a bit of an airspace there. Not a perfect fit, but you just work with it, right? And uh, these are great because they're very easy to store. Um, all my garden beds, the soil level is usually about three inches below the top. So there's always a bit of a space. So it's perfectly sort of, it really accommodates just using something really simple like this to create a mini greenhouse. I'm growing uh, lettuce in here, I think, as I recall, lettuce-like things. And so uh, they're really tough and they can handle the cold. So I've just got this plastic on here to get them germinated and get them up a few inches. Once they're up a few inches, I'll, I'll pull this, take this off and use it somewhere else. Right, for, for tough plants like that, you don't need to use the same approach for everything, right? And re remember, these microclimates, they just move the season ahead a little bit. So it's April right now, but inside here, it's, it's more like May, right? 
this is a neat little rig. This is the uh, the, the lid off of one of my uh, cold frames. I dismantled my cold frames. I just gave up on the whole cold frame idea and uh, went with the more of the sort of portable, mobile, temporary, uh, greenhouse, temporary microclimate sort of type idea. So this is the lid. And it's got these two uh, sort of triangle shaped things. Uh, and it's just one piece. It's all one piece. It's light enough for me to pick up. This might weigh 25 pounds, maybe 30 at the most. Um, so that's like I can manage that. Um, so uh, I just I haven't I haven't planted anything here yet. I just did this yesterday. I got to figure out something. But for a bed like this, um, you know, you can have basically there's, there's a bit of an air space here, but you can just move the mulch up to jam that space up, right? But there's still enough cracks that if it gets hot in here, the air can bleed off. I had a, a viewer ask me about, you know, how do you keep it from getting too hot? I, I gotta say where I live, I'm, I'm really not worried about things getting too hot this time of year. But uh, really all you gotta do is, uh, you know, there's always these uh, space gaps that I fill with mulch. Right, so if it's gonna be a hot day, I just make it, I can get my hand in there, right? So I just make a hole. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe uh, at the back, I take a little rock like this, and just prop it up a little bit, right? Just to create an airspace. That's enough for where I am. Remember, I don't have these on all summer long, right? Uh, it, it's April right now. Uh, for most things, I just have them on until the plants are large enough to, to move or the plants are so large they hit the top and then I get get rid of them. And I really don't want anything covered in my garden. I want the rain coming down on stuff. So, uh, you know, I just have these here to make up for the fact that it's just uh, it's not warm enough to get good germination right now outdoors, but in an environment like this, you can get the soil warm, warm enough for things to germinate. Uh, later in the year, for things like uh, tomatoes, squash, and stuff like that, I can start them a month early using this approach. Um, you know, but but much further along in the year, <laughs> right? Maybe maybe early May sort of thing. Here's a little more substantial sort of setup. This was an entire top tier one of my cold frames, right? So I, I just took that whole section off. And I only had three cold frames and I made three big beds out of them. I've, I've gotten so much more out of the cold frame material since I dismantled them and reused them in this way. Um, anyway, I got this slightly raised bed here, south facing, and I thought, I mean, I haven't planted anything here yet, but uh, it's such a great spot, south facing the base of a slope, that it just makes sense to have uh, you know, to turn this part of it right right next to it, I've got uh, parsnips growing and some salsify over there. But for right here, I thought maybe this would be a good place to start my uh, eggplant or peppers or something like that. Maybe peppers. Maybe this is a good place for peppers. Um, anyway, I haven't decided all that yet. Still some decisions to make. Um, I made it make a garden plan every winter, but I, I change things on the fly based on uh, what makes sense, right? It's still too early to plant peppers right now. Just people, I'm not sowing peppers right now. This is the simplest sort of setup, right? A little microclimate. Now, a bit of a design flaw here. I should actually fix it while I'm on camera here, but. So I just put the plastic on top. This is a, a salsify garden. Salsify is kind of like a parsnip, I guess. Doesn't taste like that though. Uh, people say they taste like oysters, but they don't, to me anyway. As a person who enjoys oysters, I can say they don't taste like oysters at all. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Oh, ice. Right. The trick to having a, a good, effective microclimate is to trap a little bit, of, at least in my opinion, in my experience, trap a bit of an airspace, right? So I got some little sticks like this. So you just lay them across like this. All right? They're not going to block too much sun. I wouldn't worry about that. All right, that'll keep the plastic from, from sagging. Like that. All right, now we can put it back on. And I mean, yeah, I have to mess around with the plastic and stuff a bit, um, but 
you know, it's really not too much work. If you think this is too much work, you really shouldn't bother gardening. Because <laughs> if this is too much work, I really don't know. Uh, I really don't think you'll ever be happy as a gardener because uh, it doesn't get much easier than this, in my opinion. I'm putting the rocks on just to keep it all from blowing away, right? Didn't quite reach, so we'll put this piece here. You know, some people might say that, uh, you know, the, uh, the plastic uh, filters out some of the sunlight. And that's, that's true. That's completely true. But uh, you got to remember that the... Uh, the intensity of the sun outdoors, the, the true sun, like the actual sun shining on things, it, it, it's just so much more intense than uh, than the indoor sun, right? The sun you get when you're indoors. Here, like that. So now the rain won't gather in these little pockets. It should just sh shed off, right? And now we got a little bit of an air space so the sun can heat the soil and then the, the heat escapes from the soil and gets captured here and just creates a little microclimate. Another application of the plastic here, just got the, the garden bed here that uh, I got peas down the middle here. They, they've uh, at least I've done a couple little checks and the peas have germinated. I didn't prop this up but uh, this is very temporary. I'll only have this up for a few more days. Oh and there's another thing over here I should show you. This little rig here, invaluable little tool to have in a garden. Just a piece of plastic attached to uh, two one by threes, right? If you plant a row of something, you can just flop it over, right? And if you want, you can use a rock or two to, you know, to, to prop it up. There's lots you can do to, to bow it up a little bit. But the great thing about this is that you can just fold it up like that and put it away. When the garden season is over, they cost almost nothing to make take up no room and uh, I start a lot of things under these I mean they do if it rains they get pulled in like this but you can just tighten it a little bit and uh, you get a bit of an airspace there it, it does have an effect it has a I mean I, I've started like squash and they've survived frosts under these right so a squash cannot survive a frost so anyway great little uh, sort of temporary microclimate. So I mean I'm just bringing all these ideas to your attention so you can understand there's not just one way to do it. Here's one of the micro, uh, what do I call this, tiny greenhouse. Right, I've got, um, what did I plant here? Swiss chard. Swiss chard. I got Swiss chard here. I actually planted too much. I didn't you know, sort of measure it out properly. I planted too much. So uh, I just got a, a bit more planted here. I have one of these handy dandy things. These are just great, right? So I just stuck it here. There's a bit of an airspace there. Put a couple rocks to hold it down, keep it from blowing away. Right? One on the other side there too. And uh, that should be fine. Then, you know, gotta remember the uh, Swiss chard is pretty tough. I mean, it, it can't handle a super hard freeze, but uh, covered like this, you know, 99% of the time, you do have to have an incredibly cold. Uh, freeze for the, for the plant not to handle it, but yeah, the Swiss chard can handle, you know, uh, zero, minus two, minus three, minus four, that sort of thing, and you know, however much, uh, the difference between this microclimate and the bare soil this time of year is that every night the bare soil freezes a little bit and then it thaws out during the day, whereas these, the soil is not freezing at night, so the seed's getting cold, but it's not freezing, and the seed can handle being cold, these kinds of seed, right? Coal crops, lettuce, things of that nature. I guess I should also mention, you know, this uh, little mini greenhouse is made with glass. This is a screen window somebody threw out in their trash. And uh, uh, years ago, when I started using this approach, uh, I basically hoarded a whole bunch of glass and windows. And uh, one by one they broke. <laughs> so, uh, um, 
you know, if you're the kind of person that, uh, maybe if, if you, if, if for your gardening it's not super windy, uh, or if you're just an exceptionally careful person, or if you don't have young kids, um, maybe glass is a good way to go. Um, but, uh, you know, at some point this glass will probably break. <laughs> And another reason to use plastic, like I got one over here, it's just a wooden box like this with plastic over the top, is that it doesn't weigh nearly as much. And just in case you missed that video that I did on uh, sowing, uh, what did I plant here? Uh, collards. I sowed collard greens here. This is a box just like the one I just showed, but it's got uh, plastic. And I've got some uh, bamboo sticks here just sort of bent to, to create a sort of dome on the top because unlike you know with the glass the water doesn't gather but with uh, the plastic um, if you don't bow it up a little bit with something it, it'll be, it'll form a bowl the plastic will stretch and it'll form a bowl and uh, it'll fill with water and, and the light won't get through properly and also the, the you know it just uh, creates a better microclimate when it's got a dome like that ah, and just in case you haven't seen this this little beauty uh, so this was a uh, sort of dome house or roll house or hoop house that I made using uh, two by three and one by three. Uh, the, the idea I had in my mind is, um, you know, what if someone just had a small car? I have a small car now. I used to have a pickup truck, but I got rid of that to save gas. And uh, I've got a small car. And uh, so like I, I can put a, I can put two by, you know, I can put eight footers, 10 footers, and even 12 footers in the back of my car, believe it or not. They're all the way up into the front seat sort of thing, but I can do it. Um, so this is just made by one by three by eight feet and uh, two by three by eight feet. Uh, sort of simple structure like this. Uh, this weighs more than the uh, wire remesh built hoop houses, um, but it's higher. It's consistently higher, so it's got that advantage. I got a video on how I made this thing. Uh, anyway, I planted uh, uh, beets here uh, yesterday, and uh, you know beets uh, need. Uh, warm soil to germinate. They, if you read the pack, it says, you know, 60 to 70 Fahrenheit, which is, you know, around, let's say, room temperature, 20 Celsius, give or take, right? I, I'd say it's probably like 15 Celsius is the minimum they need to germinate properly. Um, so it's certainly not 15 C out right now, but it's probably at least 15 C in here right now, right? So uh, beans can handle a cold night. Um, a really, really hard frost will, will damage the foliage, but the plant usually survives. I've experienced that, and sometimes there's been years we've had uh, hard frosts in, uh, like, first week of June sort of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you want to, you know, if you're trying to plant beets and you're not having the best results, it, it may just be that the beets didn't have, I mean, it could be your soil and it could be this, that, and the other thing, but it may just be that the, the there wasn't the right amount of heat when you were planting them, or there was too much heat when you were planting them. So to solve that, um, you give them the right amount of heat in April, right? And then you can take the dome off, let's say, uh, sometime in May, right? And then they won't be getting too much heat because it's almost like you're extending that May sort of, you know, that 20 Celsius temperature, right? Um, anyway, just a couple random thoughts on that, on beets, but anyway. Another kind of microclimate, sort of a, hoop house kind of idea made from one by threes and uh, six mil poly and staples and nails and screws and stuff. Anyway, just a few ideas and different kinds of microclimates that uh, you can have in the garden. Uh, a couple things I didn't show you that I, I use later on is the, the idea of a cloche, which is like a like an uh, inverted bell, uh, clear plastic or clear glass. Right? You could use anything. You could use an upside down glass bowl. You can use an up down, upside down clear plastic container. Right? Some people use um, like Coke bottles, they sort of cut the top off and do that. There's lots of different things you can do. Um, I would say that the, uh, the larger the area of the thing you're using, the more of a microclimate you're creating, right? Um, so the larger it is, the more, the more area that's being heated by the sun and the more air that's uh, holding that heat in proximity to the soil. So, you know, I mean, uh, that's why greenhouses work, full-size greenhouses work so well, because it's a lot of area, right, uh, capturing all that heat. Um, but as I mentioned over the course of the video, um, the, the cost is somewhat prohibitive, and, uh, you know, there's the time and expense to putting it together. 
and it's kind of stuck where it is, right? Whereas these things, you can just plop them wherever you're growing stuff. So there's an advantage to that. Of course, you got, you got to find a place to store all these things. I'm lucky I've got a good sized piece of land. I can just sort of fire all this stuff in the woods. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you have to use an approach that uh, works for your space. I, I think, you know, for the home gardener in, in a suburban setting where they don't have a lot of space, um, maybe one of these domes might be appropriate. Um, there's other ways to make domes where the whole thing can come apart. I think uh, Patrick Dolan on uh, One Yard Revolution does that. I, I find it's just uh, so windy here. I gotta have something that's really stapled together and really sturdy. Otherwise, um, you know, it'll just blow apart in place. Uh, we had a huge windstorm just a few days ago and uh, I didn't have all these domes. I have them tied down. Everything's either weighted down with rocks or tied down. And uh, one of the domes wasn't tied down and uh, it must have been blowing all around this garden because it was bent and smashed to smithereens. The, the welds in the wire remesh were pulled apart. And, uh, you know, the, the logs, so it's got two long pieces this way and then three pieces that go this way. And they were screwed in with like, I don't know, three inch screws ripped right out. And pieces in different parts of the garden too. So that thing probably flying around here. <laughs> <laughs> just give you a sense of the wind and it was a heavy one that one probably weighs oh geez maybe 40 pounds or more it was nothing that weights nothing with uh, the kind of wind we got here um, uh, anyway so yeah uh, you know if you're in a if you have a smaller property and not a lot of storage space uh, you want to think about um, modular designs that can be dismantled and and uh, taken apart I mean really the the plastic square that I've got you know, that sort of thing, um, I could see having a plastic square like that and then just having a, a box that, that fits together and comes apart and put the square on top, right? Or these the mini greenhouses that I showed you uh, might be the ideal thing for the home gardener. And there's, there's ways that could come apart too. You, you could build, if you were clever, um, you know, the box could go together with dovetails. And if you enjoy that sort of carpentry, you could have the thing just fit together like Lego and come apart. Um, I, I could see lots of... Um, uh, ways that could be done. Um, I, I don't have to do it that way here, so I mean, it takes extra time to do that sort of carpentry, but it's certainly a good winter project. Anyway, I think I've prattled on enough. <laughs> so I uh, hope that gave you some ideas and, uh, you know, some uh, some food for thought on uh, direct seeding and getting, getting things to start in your garden and not having to buy the transplant in the grocery store and not having to bother doing it in your house. Um, there's a lot of reasons to, uh, to direct seed, um, not the least of which just, I mean, your plants get their energy from the sun and there is no light like the sun. Um, that's why that's the one that gives you the sunburn. So I um, hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com, if you want to hear uh, nice long conversations between myself and other gardeners, or sometimes it's just me. And don't forget to click the bell if you want to get a notification when I make new videos. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.